Today we're talking barrel bourbon, batch number 35. Can this maybe be the best sub $100 bourbon on the market today? We're gonna talk about that today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So like I mentioned before, sub $100, can this maybe be the best bourbon that you haven't tried yet in that kind of category? What it is over the last few batches from maybe about 32 to now coming up on 35, Barrel I think has now started to kind of reintroduce themselves into the market as a major bourbon player. I've been extremely impressed again over these last several batches with just what it is that they've been able to blend and really kind of put out on the markets. We're going to talk a little bit today about batch number 35, but what exactly is batch 35? So batch 35 is coming in at 117.5 proof or 58.75% ABV. Uh, it is blends of Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee bourbons. It is age stated as six years old. Uh, MSRP on this is gonna come in at right around that $89.99. And it is blends of six, seven, and eight year old Indiana bourbons, seven and 13 year old Tennessee bourbons, and an eight year old uh, Kentucky bourbon. So a lot of different ages, a lot of different kind of profiles that are, are gonna be in this one. But again, if you're familiar with what it is that barrel does, they are master blenders. So them creating and taking all of these age stated uh, bourbons and blending them together. We're going to see exactly how uh, all of those blended together kind of shakes out and how they kind of compare overall from some of the prior batches. Let's take a look at the color here. We'll move the whiskey around the glass a little bit. Decent oils on the glass so far, kind of like a medium copper, maybe like a, a dark honey type of color. Again, moving the whiskey around the glass. Pretty decent oils. Again, all of this non-chill filtered, uh, blended, bottled, and this is exactly what we're going to get. So let's go ahead and dive into the nose. Boy, so for me, immediately heavy brown sugars. Almost like even a, a burnt honey that's on this. So a little bit more of the oak is starting to kind of come through. Maybe a little bit of that, that oak, that charred oak that's there, but definitely a honey profile on it as well. Also going to say a little bit of a, a shortbread. And when I say shortbread, I'm thinking in my mind the, the richness, the, the decadence of like a shortbread. There's something about it that is just a very rich kind of textured uh, nose that's there. Also this beautiful like rickhouse oak. It's definitely reminiscent of if you've ever spent any time in a rickhouse and just smelling that angel share. And, and all of the old oak and just all of the bourbon barrels that are in there, you get that kind of uh, nose right away. Maybe even a little bit of like a, a pecan note. There's a slight kind of dryness, but it's definitely more of a kind of like a drier pecan kind of note. Maybe even like a, like a pecan custard, something like that. There's definitely some of that richness. Maybe that's the combo of the pecan, a little bit of that shortbread, maybe like some custard, something along those lines. Yeah, definitely that kind of like vanilla custard. Also some nice kind of fresh fruits. I'm picking up a little bit of a, like a, a light summer fruit. So you maybe some of those like strawberry, raspberry kind of notes, something that is slightly dark, but without it being overly heavy on the darkness. Maybe even a little bit of like a, a citrus. It's a little bit of a combo of maybe an orange and a lemon that's there. Yeah, definitely those brown sugars. Much more of the baking spice is starting to come out as I kind of move the whiskey around in the glass. But more importantly, let's see how this one's going to taste. But before we do, let's hear a word from today's video sponsor. So today we're talking whiskey glasses. When only the best is what you demand, Unawisk has you covered. Who wants ordinary when you can have something that's extraordinary? Each one of these whiskey glasses is hand cut 
and crafted using only the finest lead-free crystal glass. These glasses come in several different designs. These two glasses here happen to be the Supernova and the Gravity. They come both packaged in single individual glasses, or you can select the set to have these shipped. Make sure you use the code JOURNEY10 at checkout. That's going to save you an additional 10% off your entire order. I have to say a big thank you to Uniwisk for sponsoring today's video. So let's go ahead and see how this one's going to taste. Cheers. So immediately it's letting you know that that 117 plus proof is there. Really fantastic spice, rye spices, baking spice, whatever you want to refer to it as, that hits you right on the forefront of the palate. Quickly thereafter, once you kind of get through that, there's much more of that, like I mentioned before, that kind of dark fruit. It's probably a little heavier on the palate for me, so it's a little bit darker. But again, some of those like maybe raspberry, strawberry, some of those kinds of, of fruits. Yeah, and also that really nice kind of sweet rickhouse oak, uh, great brown sugars on this. The, the mouth texture on it, again, was very creamy, very oily. Overall, it's really wanting to coat the entire palette, front, middle, and back. Does a great job of just kind of lingering and sitting right there on the palate, which should ultimately translate over to a lot more flavor for you. Yeah, I would say if you really appreciate a bourbon that has some really nice spice to it with a nice kind of Kentucky hug, this really has all of that. Definitely some chocolate notes, kind of, I think the longer it sits on the palate, a little bit more of that kind of, um, you know, milk chocolate kind of uh, profile starts to get. So with the blends of these, I'm also picking up a little bit of like a, of a nuttiness. And when I, when I refer to like a pecan note, that in my mind is starting to get where it's a little richer texture, a little more like a, of a dryness that's there. But overall, it's, it's a fantastic profile right away. I mean, I've spent a little bit of time with this bourbon already, letting it kind of open up. And, and one of the things I've kind of taken away uh, from, from this is I think it's been beautifully blended. I just think overall at this point early on, even as we go through these notes, it's just a really well blended you know, bourbon. I think everything that they've kind of used between the Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana bourbons, they've really just done a fantastic job with this. And it's really translating over to the palate and, and offering, I think, an, a really rich, complex bourbon. And I think one that a lot of bourbon lovers are truly, truly going to enjoy. You know, the more I sip on it, you know, again, the balance of it, like I had mentioned before, fantastic. You know, that rye spice that just continues to linger, a little bit of that heat that still kind of remains. It's just a great whiskey experience so far. Maybe even a hint late of like an orange zest. There's definitely something that's kind of coming through. And oftentimes with the Tennessee whiskeys and or some of the MGP, you will get some of that orange or orange zest, some of that's coming through. And for me, it's definitely starting to kind of hit there. Yeah, more of those great like dark fruits, that's really starting to kind of come out. And when I say that heavier kind of dark fruits, I had mentioned kind of raspberry, strawberry uh, before, but now that it's kind of sitting in the glass, opening up a little bit, it's starting to kind of transition a little bit to, you know, some of those kind of heavier, uh, darker fruits. So it's starting to just become a slightly darker, maybe even more chocolatey, a little bit more honey uh, notes. That's just allowing this to feel richer and, and more complex. I think if you sit down with this or give it to somebody who didn't know what this was, I think they would automatically want to defer to this being a slightly older whiskey profile. You know, now as we kind of get into it a little bit more, you start to get a little bit, maybe a touch of dryness. So I would say some of those leathers, tobaccos is oftentimes how I kind of refer to that, that dryness. And it's definitely there. And what I would say with this whiskey in particular is 
I think overall, it's something that you need to just spend some time with. It's a high quality uh, bourbon that I just think that the longer you are able to sit down with it and, and kind of just explore what it has to offer, it will do all of that for you. So you're gonna pull out a lot of different things. I think the longer this whiskey sits in your glass, overall, I think it's another incredible bourbon that barrel has, has blended. Interesting. Just uh, again, I just picked up a little hint of like a cherry or maybe a cherry tobacco that's there. So I'd mentioned earlier on some of the darker fruits that are kind of coming out. So you're starting to get a little bit more of those heavier cherry kind of notes. So this thing is really all over the place in a very good way. So um, again, I think for what this bourbon is, if you can take your time with it and understand everything that it really has going for it, I think it'll make you truly appreciate it a little bit more knowing what these blends uh, actually are. I've been so impressed, you know, the last few batches with what it is that Barrel has been doing that I'm anxious to see what it is that they do, you know, now and going forward, kind of continuing this pattern. And if it continues this way, I think Barrel is going to quickly again become one of those those companies, whiskey companies that people are going to really start to, you know, pay more attention to. And I think with what it is that they've done, uh, it's already at that point. It's just going to be what are they able to do, kind of going forward, continuing these different releases, these different blends. Uh, and it's something that I've always appreciated about Barrel is is kind of always slightly pushing the envelope a little bit just putting out some different blends and, and, and kind of looking and waiting to see exactly how they're gonna develop. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much. And again, if you're a fan of Barrel, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know some of your you know, favorite batches that you've had uh, recently or going back several years. Uh, always interested, but again, I think like I'd mentioned before, what it is that Barrel is doing, uh, the last you know, handful of batches, uh, I am totally on board with, with everything that it is that they're doing. So again, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel or become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out the Patreon uh, link in the description below. A lot of other good things down there, so make sure you check out some of those links that are down there as well. So again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers. Girl, I wouldn't trade it all for the world no. With you, I get high With you, I'm alive With you, I'm away How do we find love in a hidden place? Let's just escape from the noise and the light